It's John Crumpler again with the Texans Wire. And we're here with Jordan Pond from Sports Illustrated for one last installment of talking about Lovey's Tampa 2. Jordan, how are you doing? Doing great, John. Ready to continue our great series, man. I've enjoyed talking about the front seven. And let's get into the secondary. I know you're a big secondary guy. All right, Jordan, I am. I love I love defensive <laughs> backs. I played defensive back uh, middle school. I was terrible at it. Smallest person <laughs> on my team. But, you know, I... I really developed an affinity for uh, the little guy. You, you kind of have to kind of have a mental edge out there. It's like uh, like tennis players when you're just out there by yourself. Uh, I, I love a good DB. And we all kind of know what corners do. I think corner is probably one of the easiest positions to understand in football. In terms of Lovey's Tampa 2, what are we looking for from our corners? Yeah, so I'll start with the physical breakdown because that's a very, very – quick way to kind of filter in and out of the filter the cornerbacks to look for especially in the draft um you he wants tall guys ideally six foot and over he wants long arms 32 inch plus or longer and he wants fast guys so look at like four four five and and lower in terms of that that would be kind of your benchmark um and in terms of their actual responsibilities on the field we all know it's a zone heavy defense So what these guys are going to be doing a lot of time is playing what's called flat zones. And so they're not going to be responsible for many deep responsibilities, but more so in the short area of the field. And ideally what Lovey has historically succeeded with and excelled with is these big, long physical cornerbacks who can press at the line of scrimmage and kind of throw off the route timing of the wide receivers so that you give the pass rush more time to get there. And so they try and work hand in hand with the pass rush um, and in terms of the cornerbacks, so you want that physicality, you want that zone awareness, you want ball skills. And then because they're also going to be playing up at the line of scrimmage so much, you also want them to be good run defenders. And so they need to be able to tackle in space um, and kind of be extra force defenders to help out those defensive ends um, on the edge. And how might that profile change when we talk about a slot or a nickel corner? Yeah, very different, completely different. You don't need, you no longer need that 6'2", 33-inch arm type of archetype. Um, We look at Tavier Thomas, we look at Desmond King, who was initially brought in to play the nickel, and they're smaller guys. They can be six foot or sub sub six foot. They can be 190 pounds um, and and have shorter arms. It's more about having fluid movement skills to cover a zone area, to cover a slot wide receiver, and what will stay the same with those cornerbacks and as might even be more emphasized as a nickel is your tackling because the Mm -hmm. Texans are going to play nickel pretty much more than they play base defense. So they're going to have two linebackers and one nickel instead of that third linebacker, that nickel needs to be damn near as good of a tackler as a linebacker because they're going to be out there so much on rundowns and teams are going to see a smaller corner out there and like, let's run at him. But if you got a guy like Tavier Thomas, who was a great tackler this past season, um, then that's how you can kind of negate that. And the Texans, they're kind of making it known. They, they have this public affinity. It would appear for Sauce Gardner from Cincinnati. And he fits a lot of the traits of the boundary corner you were describing. What's a, what's a corner prospect? Let's say they take Kayvon Thibodeau at number 30. Who is someone you would target at 37? So between your fourth and your eighth best corner who could come in and do a lot of the things this football team would want them to. Yeah. I think the ideal guy would be Kyer Elam out of Florida. He also um, has a lot of the same measurements, speed, um, physicality. Will he be there at 37? You're probably going to have to pray a little bit for that one. Um, Some other guys who would fit well, maybe not at 37. There's not many others in that uh in that range but i think in the in the uh third round a guy like cam taylor Britt out of nebraska a guy like martin emerson out of mississippi state um and potentially a guy like kobe bryant out of cincinnati do you think there's any hope that my guy and your guy you love them at the senior bowl too roger mccreary could be a houston texan or is his size profile just not a fit for this scheme yeah unfortunately man because he's a great player really great player but the size is not big enough. He doesn't have long enough arms. More man cover corner than a zone corner. So unfortunately, 
Um, I don't think he fit too well with the scheme. I wouldn't expect the Texans to, to be a big fan of him. Okay. Okay. And then let's transition to the safeties. So for those who aren't aware, you have two safeties. You have your free safety and you have your strong safety. Uh, the strong safety is when people talk about a box safety, that's who we're referring to. He's going to play a little closer to the line of scrimmage. We're really going to expect him to come up and help and run support. But then also on passing downs in a cover two, he's expected to be able to play as fluently as your free safety on the back end. And then your free safety is that classic last line of defense. When you're thinking about cover one, he's the guy who's 20, 25, probably, probably not that far. But he's the guy who's far back and making sure that nothing gets behind the defense. Uh, what would you want to add to that, Jordan? Um, yeah, I would just add to say that we've talked a lot about as a cover two, Tampa two type of defense and, and the second most common coverage that Lovey ran last year, and especially in the second half of the season was cover three. So I think he, he ideally wants to diversify a little bit. Um, and in that cover three, your strong safety would, would be in that box and you'd have to cover tight ends a little bit more often. Um, but I guess the only thing I would really want to add other than that is that Safety is a big need for us. I mean, both of those starting roles are, are really open, especially with the departure of Justin Reed. So Kyle Hansen, man, our boy at three. Yeah. I think it's a smart I, pick. I'm still holding out hope for Kyle Hamilton, despite everything coming out that makes it sound more and more unlikely each day, I hate to say. Uh, which of those two roles would you project, would you project Hamilton into the best? Um, so in a Tampa two, it's really either – I think he can be most valuable as a free safety because that's kind of more of the ball hawking um, role. And he has that speed, the instincts to cover um, from the middle hash to the sideline really, really well. Um, in terms of a cover three defense, which we'll rotate to every once in a while, um, he would definitely be better as a strong safety in the box, use his size on tight ends and be closer to the line of scrimmage so that he can defend the run. So I think the great thing about him is that you can move him around no matter what coverage, depending on the coverage that you're playing. And then a name at strong safety that I think everyone in Houston has heard by now, whether it was from his time with the Baylor Bears or during the draft prospect, is Jalen Petrie. I know you're a huge fan of his. Talk about where you could put him in this defense. Yeah, so I love him. And I think the, the interesting thing about him, particularly with the Texans, is that you kind of don't want him playing deep too much. So you definitely don't want him as a free safety. Even as a strong safety, Like I think there's going to be some development there in terms of a deep cover two type of guy. But where he fits really well is that nickel role. He's really kind of this nickel safety line hybrid, kind of those three roles meshed into one. Um, where you want him closer to the line of scrimmage. You want him blitzing pretty much nine times out of 10. That's really where his biggest value is. And so it's not kind of a tradition, a super traditional role for Lovey to have a DB that blitzes so much, but I see him kind of like a Buda Baker, kind of like a Kenny Moore um, type of player where it, that's where his highest impact is going to be. And so he would allow Lovey to get a bit more diverse, a little bit more versatile um, and put extra pressure on the quarterback if that's something he wants to do 